In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Summer greetings. I'm blessed to be with you today. I'm Deacon Joe Cazone from St. Thomas the Apostle, and I'm grateful that you're taking part in this prayer service today. Thursday, the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. Baseball is back, and football is right around the corner, I think. It's great to have those pieces of life to kind of anchor ourselves in these days. We all miss seeing each other at our 6.30 a.m. weekday communion service, but I'm grateful to be able to share the readings and the gospel reflection and our prayers of the faithful in this recorded format. I realize it's not the same as seeing each of you face to face, how awesome it will be to do that again when it's safe to do so. You can continue to be in my prayers and I thank you for keeping me and my family in your prayers. Today we recognize St. Gregory the Great, Pope and Doctor of the Church, founding six monasteries, becoming a Benedictine monk, a Pope who is known for his reform of the liturgy and down-to-earth preaching style. Even though he was content to be a monk, he gave his energies to his work as Pope. Gregory described bishops as physicians, which fits right in with Pope Francis' description of the church as a field hospital. Thank you for watching and for participating in today's service. I would typically invite all gathered to turn and greet each other. Please still do this as we envision each other's handshakes, hugs, and smiles. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is Paul's first, from first, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, let no one deceive himself or herself. If anyone among you considers himself or herself wise in this age, let he or she become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The Word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm is, To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas, 
and established it upon the rivers. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. To the Lord belongs the earth and all that fills it. Alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats, so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, it gives me joy and fills me with gratitude when I'm reminded that Jesus Christ is in charge. All of life's challenges, curveballs, disappointments, are manageable when we put our trust in the one who loves us. The first reading is a good reality check kind of reading. No matter how much we think we're keeping it all together, it's God who is keeping it all together for us. And if it seems like it's not all together, as we would like it to be, then it's time to turn it over. It's time for a conversion of heart, like Paul is trying to teach the Corinthians. And then Luke's Gospel today, in some ways, speaks of conversion also. Peter, after realizing that, his, that he and his friends worked all night and yielded no fish, but at Jesus' command to lower the nets, their catch was huge. Did Peter experience a conversion? It's described that the astonishment at the catch of fish seized them, made them afraid. And Jesus says, once again, do not be afraid. How appropriate for this time we're in to hear these words from Jesus to us. Do not be afraid. Let that sink in for a minute. Then Jesus adds to his message that they would be catching people. Another message of conversion that they probably didn't quite understand at that point but they would eventually, as their hearts became open to the Holy Spirit. Their words and actions 
caused conversions of others and an increase in the number of followers of Jesus' gospel. If you lived in that time and heard Jesus speaking or were present for any of the apostles' healings, would that have convinced you to experience a conversion? I know it's hard to say, but I'd like to think about what it must, what it must have been like to hear a new message, one that was very different, and calling me to change. There's that word again, change. Are you being called to conversion? Are you ready for change? Thank you for being on this journey with me. I pray that we're together in person very soon and that you're safe, healthy, and always in God's loving care. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. As we gather in this virtual prayer service, let us offer these prayers to God and know that where two or more are gathered, He is among us, He hears us, and He answers us. We pray for the people in our Book of Intentions, the prayer intentions of our St. Thomas Prayer Network, and for all those who need our prayers in our faith community, that Jesus' healing and forgiving touch reaches them, and because of their faith brings them relief, we pray to the Lord. For the Church and those who are suffering from hardness of heart, that they may experience a conversion in humility, bringing about a change for the better and understanding of how God's love can bring healing. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for vocations, both ordained and lay, that young adults are given the opportunity to experience the call of the Holy Spirit and the call to serve others. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those returning to school, that our Lord protects each student, teacher, and administrator, and that they stay safe and healthy throughout the school year. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick, the lonely and isolated in hospitals and nursing homes, and for those who have died, that God's promise of eternal life received at baptism be known to them, and that those who grieve be comforted through their faith and the faith of those around them. We pray to the Lord. And for all those intentions in the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Look, O Lord, on the prayers of your family and grant them the assistance they humbly implore, so that, strengthened by the help they need, they may persevere in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And now in place of our Eucharist and receiving the bread, I offer up the prayer of spiritual communion from Padre Pio. Padre Pio celebrated Mass daily and at various times during the day he would pause and pray making this spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I'm, I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from heavenly table, from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you for sharing in this prayer service again today. Have a wonderful day and a safe, relaxing, and peaceful Labor Day holiday weekend. I hope to see you soon. God bless. Peace.